Thank you. Chairman, this is the last of the Valdosta cases. This is proposed text amendments to the LDR, uh, most of which contain Chapter 230 design regulations. Uh, we went through this at good length at the work session. Um, the history of this is back in 2010. Um, the city amended the sign regs to sort of widen or relax the standards for portable site um, signs dramatically, um, allowing them with a permit um, for an extended period of time. Um, the sunset date was placed at the end of 2012, um, so that continued on, and then in 2012, that was extended to 2015. And at the end of 2015, six months ago, um, that was extended six months. Um, to allow the city council to appoint a committee of three council members and myself to study that whole chapter and come up with some recommendations. Um, the main task was to look at portable or temporary signage and see how we can come up with a more permanent solution. Um, after multiple meetings with the committee, um, the recommendation is essentially to take the provisions for temporary signage and roll back the clock to how it was before the fall of 2010, um, and that's where we're reflecting in the amendments. So portable signs would be allowed in lieu of a freestanding sign only. Um, you still need to get a permit, but the main scenario would be, uh, or typical scenario would be a business that is open or about to open, but does not have the freestanding sign installed yet. So this would allow them to have a temporary sign until such time as their freestanding sign arrived or up to 90 days, whichever came first. Um, then as far as banners, um, it would be a temporary basis, uh, one 30 consecutive day period per calendar quarter. Um, that is actually a relaxation of how it was before 2010. Back then you could have a banner um, one 30 day period twice a year. So this increases it from twice to four times a year. It's still a 30 day consecutive term within the calendar quarter and also with the permit. One thing that we are adding here also, which is an improvement um, with the city's wall sign regulations, um, the size of your wall signage is based on the linear feet or width of your storefront or where you're building. Um, it's one for one. Um, however, like with the shopping center, even if you have a narrow storefront, you are still given at least are given up to 50 square feet as a minimum, and then as your storefront is beyond 50 feet wide and your wall signage would increase proportionally. Banner sort of works the same way, except it's a different formula. It's one square foot per three linear feet of width of your storefront, um, but there was no mural built in. So if you had an 18 foot wide storefront, you got six square feet of banner, which is kind of small. So what the rec recommendation here is to treat this sort of along the way as a wall sign, but you would get a minimum of 24 square feet of banner area, regardless of the width of your store. And as your storefront increases in size beyond the point, then your banner area increases proportionally. So that in itself, I think, is an improvement. So those are the first two amendments in the packet. Uh, amendment number three, this is one we did not go over much detail of the work session, uh, but this has to do with overlay districts uh, for the metal siding prohibition. Um, citywide, we have a prohibition of metal siding on fronts of buildings anywhere outside of an industrial district. Um, in the overlay districts, it goes a step beyond that. It prohibits metal siding on any walls that face a street or a parking lot. The language, however, has been fairly general as to what type of parking lot and or may or may not apply. So the intent here is to clear that up and it's to continue to prohibit metal siding, but if you're clearly facing a street, visible from the street, and a uh, customer parking lot. We had a Barron's case several months ago, actually last summer, on Interprimitor Road, um, where a warehouse type building was proposed in the rear yard area, but in between that and the main building up front was a large parking area, except that was for employees, not for customers. Um, it was 400 plus feet off of the road, um, they had to go through a various process to get that approved. Um, we don't think that was the intent of this regulation, but we certainly wanted to protect the view from the roads and the parking lots that are public. So we're trying to clean up or clarify some of the language here. And the fourth amendment is the definition. Yes, sir. 
what's their objection to metal signs? And then they make the exception down below it. Uh, the components are clearly decorative and incidental to the wall of the building are not included. Right. The, um, a typical metal shelled building, very much a warehouse industrial look. The intent is to keep that from uh, appearing in our commercial and residential districts so they don't look industrial. And that language below is to put in place an action that was done by the Zoning Board of Appeals. We had a case of a proposed restaurant that had stainless steel siding, sort of a retro 1950s diner look. Okay. We did not think the intent of the regulations was to prohibit that, but the language basically said it was because it was metal siding. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals ruled that it was okay to do that, and that should be the intent. So we're trying to memorialize that in the language of the code so it doesn't get forgotten. Um, so another thing we're seeing now that we didn't see as much six years ago is a lot of new development are using metal siding as accents to the building or something in the mm -hmm. upper floor. Um, we do not think that was intended to be prohibited. It is basically to prohibit the metal box from going in the commercial area. So it's trim work or something that is clearly decorative. We're saying in here that it should be allowed. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You weren't there. Go ahead. No, go ahead. And the last one is just two definitions in the definitions chapter. The first one is at the request of the city arborist. When we went through those amendments a few months ago with the landscape chapter, one thing that got noticed is that we did not have a definition for transitional buffer. We thought that was all understood as to what that was, um, but I think the arborist has had to explain that many times to developers and thought it would be easier just to have a definition to point to. Um, and then the other one is something I put in almost tongue-in-cheek, but a definition of calendar quarter. Um, to me, it's very, very clear. But some people out there would make the argument that it's any three-month period, uh, regardless of what the months are called. Um, I just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> Not everyone uses financial quarters like the rest of us do. Mr. Bolton, you have a question, sir? Yeah, on the First Amendment, Matt, am I reading this correctly, that it, this, this amendment or this chapter could be used as long as you were diligent about permitting to continuously have a portable sign on your property under three three month permits? Um, it's only in lieu of a freestanding sign in up to 90 days. So and that's they it. never wanted to put a freestanding sign and have a portable sign. They continuously get three month permits. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't say one time. Because I would venture to say that if you add it at the end of subsection A and only for one continuous three month period per calendar year, that you would close that loophole. <clears throat> Which I don't like. Them. I wish we'd outlaw. I wish we'd like Athens and free but all these things. But. Um. Perhaps, I mean, just thinking out loud in that yellow language, portable signs should be limited to once per parcel. Or once, uh, it is, now it says one per parcel. All right, I'm thinking changing one to once. Um, that may not be enough. I mean, I had written out to add at the end, and only for one continuous three month period per calendar year. Or you could say, and only for one continuous three-month period uh, during the time of ownership of the parcel by the same owner and really close to look. Yeah, and that was the intent, that they just get one shot at this. Um, the idea is to encourage the permanent freestanding sign and not be supportable sign. Because right now you have, I mean, if you time getting a permit correctly, you can basically have a sign all the time under this line. Right, That's under that interpretation. That is not the intent of it. Um, I didn't think it was. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, I, I can add that when we vote on it, if you want to. Could you say that again? Did you get it, Carmel? 
only one. If only I might, one I should get up later. Well, but then just something to note, Mr. Chairman, something with it's this language you see before you is the exact same language we had between 1992 and 2010. Um, and had not been noticed before is that. But that's a very interesting point. And then the other thing I saw on here is uh, I would assume this would be spell check, but in Amendment 3, building has two ends in it and all three of the changes. Either the spell checker missed it or my middle aged eyes missed it. Either way, I'm here to we'll fix it. That's all I have. Any other questions for Matt? I would just say I'd be glad to give you all that language. I would prefer not to make this motion because I don't think we ought to have any signs like this anywhere. I think they're a flight on the city. <laughs> I think all of them ought to be prohibited just like other cities do. And I think this is you know, caving in to some people who use this for a poor reason. So Anyone want to make I'll be glad to suggest that language if you want to add it to a motion. Anyone? But I'm going to vote against it. Did, did staff want to comment? You look like you might want to say Well, that. I mean, I understand the point. I mean, are you referring to just the portable sign issue or portable or banners as well? Banners and things that blow up and wave at you when you go by and <laughs> everything else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's rid of a lot of that. Um, the portable sign way, assuming to be used once, um, for say a new business. I only remember one incident of that happening between 1992 and at least 2002. Uh, someone actually taking advantage of it to use one time. It was for a new business. I'm not aware of any others since then. Um, we did have a case a few months ago where one business um, was in the same predicament. It was a, an older building that being renovated. They had a very old sign. They wanted to renovate it as a new sign and they were concerned about getting the new freestanding sign in time to open. Um, what they ended up doing, since this provision was not in code, they didn't want to get the portable sign. Uh, one was it was in the historic district and wouldn't have been allowed anyway. They actually resorted to getting a banner to put on their building wall um, until such time as the sign would get changed. Um, so that worked for them, but they would like to have the sign out on the street. So and my thinking was, well, if we had this in place, they could have done it if they weren't in the historic district. But that's the only other time in all those many I mean, years does, I've seen it come up. Does the one property owner we all know that has blinking signs in front of his business constantly, is that an enforcement issue or is that? It is very much an enforcement issue. Um, they get caught, they get found, they go away, and they find their way back over time. It's a, it's a constant headache for staff to chase these. Is there any way of finding them? Um, there is, and what we're trying to do is sharpen some more teeth in here. So at least if those who get, say, a banner, um, everyone's on the same quarterly cycle um, in terms of the consecutive days and we can monitor them. Part of the issue now is keeping up with who has a banner permit, who doesn't. Um, since the banner permit, you could have purchased it back in 2010, it would still be active until June 30th of this year. And that doesn't mean that when the banner goes away, the permit goes away. The permit's still active, which means the banner can come back. And so keeping up with those has been very troublesome. Um, plus, I would venture to say the majority of them out there didn't have kind of permit to start with. But that's something the committee has looked into as well, is um, tightening the time frames that we use in our code enforcement process. Uh, right now, they have a lot of time before they actually get in front of the municipal judge. Yeah. Um, and 
and the way I think some of the business out there is just take advantage of that. Imagine that. Before we end comments, the language I suggest if somebody wants to write this down. At the end of section A, add in the wording and only for one continuous three month period per calendar year. Any other questions or comments, gentlemen? Okay, then. Do we have any recommendations? Well, Mr. Chair, um, I'd like to make a recommendation that we do recommend approval of this request of the MLDR Chapter 106 definition of Chapter 210 Overland District and Chapter 235 regulation. As discussed with the uh, wording provided by Commissioner Colson at the end of Section 8, that uh, this be only for one continuous two month period per calendar year. Yeah. Anybody else want to discuss that for a little bit? All right, we have a motion. Did we uh, have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Okay, all in favor, raise your right hand, please. And all opposed? Four against you. I wrote you said raise your right hand, raise. <laughs> Are you in favor or against? Yes. Okay, very well. Five more districts. Five more. Five more. <laughs> Any other business that we need to attend to? The more you won't get here. Thanks. <laughs> okay, anything from staff? Sir, I did some homework based on some of our people.